Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. If x and y are real numbers such that x times y is less than 1, then the arctangent of x plus the arctangent of y is equal to the arctangent of x plus y all over 1 minus x times y. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves of our definition of the arctangent function. Then, we have shown that the limit of the sequence Rn is equal to 0. And we have also shown that the sequence 2 to the n Rn converges. And we define the value that this sequence converges to to be the arctangent of R. All right, so this is our definition of the arctangent function. Now, we have proven some properties about this sequence, one of which is that r n plus 1 squared is less than 1 for all n. And we also considered how this sequence behaves in the complex numbers. And to see how this sequence behaves in the complex numbers, we can use the following fact about complex numbers. Suppose alpha plus beta i is a complex number with magnitude 1, whose real part is not equal to negative 1. Then alpha plus beta i is equal to this. So to see how this sequence behaves in the complex numbers, let's consider an arbitrary integer n greater than or equal to 0. Well then, by definition, we know that rn plus 1 is equal to this. And now, we're going to divide both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 1 plus rn squared. If we do that, we get this. So now we're going to apply this fact. To do that, we are going to take alpha plus beta i to be the following complex number. We're taking alpha plus beta i to be this complex number. And with this choice of alpha plus beta i, we see that the magnitude of this complex number is certainly equal to 1. And also, certainly, the real part of this complex number is not equal to negative 1. So, with this choice of alpha plus beta i, we can be sure that this equality is true. Now notice, the numerator here is just beta. The denominator is 1 plus alpha. So rn plus 1 is equal to beta over 1 plus alpha. Therefore, we're just going to be replacing beta over 1 plus alpha with rn plus 1. And we're going to be replacing alpha plus beta i with this. So we get this. So really, this becomes this. And if we add these two fractions together, we get this. So this guy is equal to this guy. What this tells us is, given any integer n greater than or equal to 0, it follows that these two guys are equal. So now, let's get into proving this theorem. To start off the proof, let's consider two arbitrary real numbers, x and y, and we'll suppose x times y is less than 1. From here, the whole goal is to prove this equality. Now to start, let's consider defining three sequences as follows. So we've defined three sequences. Now remember, by definition, the limit of 2 to the n xn is equal to arctangent of x. The limit of 2 to the n yn is equal to arctangent of y. And the limit of 2 to the n un is equal to arctangent of x plus y all over 1 minus x times y. Now first, we prove the following claim. 
we claim that xn times yn is less than 1 for all n greater than or equal to 0. Now, we don't need induction to prove this, so what we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves an arbitrary integer n greater than or equal to 0. From here, we want to prove that xn times yn is less than 1. And we're going to prove that in two cases. First, let's consider the case n equals 0. If n equals 0, well then xn times yn is equal to x0 times y0. And by definition, x0 is x, y0 is y. So we have x times y. And by assumption, this is less than 1. So xn times yn is less than 1. So this completes the case n equals 0. So now let's suppose that n is positive. Now, this preliminary result is equivalent to saying rn squared is less than 1 for all positive integers n. So using this fact, we know that xn squared is less than 1 and yn squared is less than 1. In fact, we know that these guys are both greater than or equal to 0. So since these guys both lie between 0 and 1, their product must lie between 0 and 1 as well. And from here, it should follow that xn times yn is also less than 1. The reason why is because if we instead have that xn times yn is greater than or equal to 1, then if we multiply xn yn on both sides of this inequality, we get xn squared yn squared is greater than or equal to xn yn. But xn yn, by assumption, is greater than or equal to 1, and that tells us xn squared yn squared is greater than or equal to 1, which is a contradiction to this. So we can't have xn yn greater than or equal to 1, we must instead have that xn yn is less than 1. So we see, given any integer n greater than or equal to 0, if n equals 0, then xn yn is less than 1. If n is greater than 0, then x and y n is also less than 1. So this proves our claim. So the notes that I have written in red are general notes about this sequence, and the notes I have in blue pertain specifically to this proof. So now, since we've ran out of room, let's move back up to the top. But now, the real claim is the following. We claim that un is equal to xn plus yn all over 1 minus xn yn for all n. Right, and this assertion makes sense because we know for all n, xn yn is less than 1, therefore 1 minus xn yn is greater than 0. So we can divide by 1 minus xn yn, right? So this makes sense. So now let's prove it. We're going to prove this using induction. Clearly, the base case is already done because we know that u0, by definition, is equal to x plus y all over 1 minus xy. But x0 is equal to x and y0 is equal to y. So we have this. And so we have shown that this is true in the case where n is equal to 0. So this completes the base case. So now we move on to the induction step. In the induction step, we suppose inductively that un is equal to xn plus yn all over 1 minus xn times yn for some n. And from here, we want to show that un plus 1 is equal to xn plus 1 plus yn plus 1, all over 1 minus xn plus 1 times yn plus 1. So how do we show that? Well, to do that, we consider the following product. We consider the product of these two guys. Well, we know that this guy is equal to this, and this guy is equal to this. Right? We're really just using this fact right here. 
And now, let's multiply these two guys together. If we multiply the two guys in the numerator, well then we get this. And if we multiply the two things in the denominator, well, we can combine these two guys into a single square root. So we get this. But now, let's consider multiplying 1 plus x n squared times 1 plus y n squared. If we expand this out, we get this. But now, we are going to add and subtract 2xn yn. If we do that, we get this. But now, we just group together these guys and group together these guys. Well, the first set of parentheses is really just equal to this. And the second set of parentheses is just equal to this. So we can replace the guy that we have underneath the square root with this. So now what do we do from here? Well, in the numerator, we're going to factor out 1 minus xn yn. If we do that, what do we get in the parentheses? We get this. Similarly, in the denominator, we're going to factor out 1 minus xn yn squared inside the square root. If we do that, then what do we get in the parentheses? We get this. And remember, we can split up this square root into a product of square roots. Really, this is just equal to this, but we know that square root of 1 minus xn yn squared is just equal to 1 minus xn yn. So this is what we have. And now we see that the 1 minus x and y ends cancel out. And by our induction hypothesis, this guy is equal to un. So we can replace this with un, replace this with un, and we get this. And by this property, this guy is equal to this. And so we have shown that this guy times this guy is equal to this guy. But now, let's multiply these two guys together. Well, if we multiply the numerators, we get this. And if we multiply the denominators, we get this. And so, again, we're going to factor out 1 minus xn plus 1, yn plus 1 in the numerator. If we do that, we get this. And if we factor out 1 minus xn plus 1, yn plus 1 in the denominator, we get this. And now, we see that these guys are going to cancel out. And so, we see... This guy is equal to this guy times this guy, which is equal to this guy. So putting all these equalities together, we have we have this. But does this imply that un plus 1 is equal to xn plus 1 plus yn plus 1 all over 1 minus xn plus 1 times yn plus 1? It turns out it does. Because remember... When we have the following situation, then this implies that A is equal to B, right? Given any two real numbers, A and B, if these guys are equal, then A is equal to B, right? You can show this just by cross-multiplying and setting the real and imaginary parts equal to each other. You'll obtain that A is equal to B. So in this situation, we have that UN plus 1 is equal to this guy exactly what we wanted to show. And this completes the induction step. And so our second claim is proven.
And now, from our second claim, we get the following. We get this. So if we consider any integer n greater than or equal to zero, we can re-express un as this, because that's what our second claim tells us. So then we just distribute 2 to the n through the numerator, we get this. So for all integers n greater than or equal to zero, these two guys are equal. So now we're in a good position to show this equality is true. Remember, by definition, the arc tangent of x plus y all over 1 minus x times y is equal to the limit of 2 to the n un. But remember, 2 to the n un is equal to this guy for all n. So certainly, the limit of 2 to the n un is equal to the limit of this guy. But what is the limit of this guy? Well, we could just use properties of limits to figure that out. If we look at the sequence in the numerator, we know that the limit of the sequence in the numerator is just arctangent of x plus arctangent of y. And if we look at the sequence in the denominator, well, this sequence converges to 1. Because, in general, we know that rn converges to 0. So in this case, xn converges to 0 and yn converges to 0. Therefore, xn times yn converges to 0. Therefore, 1 minus xn times yn converges to 1. And so, applying the division rule for limits, we get that the limit of this guy is equal to arctangent of x plus arctangent of y over 1. Which is equal to arctangent of x plus arctangent of y. And so, we have proven exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.